What's up guys, I am here at Greenwich in London, the centre of time itself. Why am I saying that? That building behind me is the Royal Observatory here at Greenwich and it's the centre of Greenwich Mean Time. The prime meridian, which is zero degrees longitude either way, runs right the way through the centre of that building there. This sundial right here in the beautiful Greenwich Park sits on the centre of the prime meridian line. It goes straight through the middle of there. What does that mean? Well, quite simply, if I stand right just here, I am in the Eastern Hemisphere. And if I stand just here, I am in the Western Hemisphere. Today, I'm heading that way. You see, Phileas Fogg famously went around the world in 80 days and these days that seems like a little bit of an easy challenge. So I'm going to do it the hard way. I'm going to be flying around the world in 80 hours from here at Greenwich all the way around the world and back here to Greenwich again where I'll be back on Monday evening. So right now it is just approaching 9am on a Friday morning and I need to be back here at this sundial by 5pm on Monday evening. Can I do it? Can I get around the world in 80 hours? Well, there's only one way to find out. It's 9 a.m., let's go flying. So my first flight on this crazy adventure leaves in just under three hours time, but it's from Heathrow, which is right across the other side of London. I really should have thought this through a little bit. Getting from Greenwich to Heathrow Airport by public transport isn't really an easy undertaking. I had to get the DLR across to Bank. From there, it was a tube across to Lancaster Gate before I walked a little bit before getting the Heathrow Express from Paddington all the way to the central terminals at Heathrow Airport. From there, I had to hop onto a TfL rail service that took me for the last little hop from terminals 2 and 3 down to a terminal 4. Alright, so here at Heathrow Terminal 4, my flight leaves in about an hour's time. It's took me an hour and 45 minutes to get across London on the DLR, the Tube, Heathrow Express. But now I am here, I need to go and find somewhere to check in. Morning, hiya. Checking in. Please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now after what was a brutal trip down to New Zealand and back in my 71 hours video, I decided this time I would take things a little bit more easy and go for business class. This wasn't really because I was trying to be a snob or anything, but I got some really cheap deals as I'll explain later on in this video, but also I won't be sleeping in any hotels at all on this day, so I really needed to make sure that I got my sleep when I needed it. As we lay back and head towards the Middle East, let me talk you through the route that we're going to take on this 80 hours round the world trip. From London I'll head across to Kuwait, from Kuwait it's across to Delhi in India before hopping down to Ahmedabad and Mumbai. From there I'm flying down to Singapore with Singapore Airlines and from Singapore it'll be across to Los Angeles in the USA, hopping back 24 hours on an Airbus A350. From LA it'll be back to London Heathrow on a Virgin Atlantic Dreamliner. So this flight gets a little bit weird now. It's now three hours until we land, but according to the flight map, we're landing in 47 minutes. We're over 10. Ladies and gentlemen, the aircraft will dive now to Istanbul International Airport to take care of the medical case on board. Thank you. That will explain why we are doing a medical diversion to Istanbul. Okay, so recovery of the century. We're now not diverting to Istanbul, they've just come on and said we're now going straight to Kuwait. Okay. As the sun set over Iraq, it was time to sit back and watch the sun set out the window, as well as watching Take That on the TV screen. Kuwait always at least have some taste when it comes to entertainment. The security line for connecting flights at Kuwait was pretty intense. Fortunately, business class passengers were pulled aside and were given a separate security lane. As the beautiful call to prayer echoed through the airport, I headed down to the Al Mubarakia lounge here at Kuwait. This is Kuwait Airways lounge at Kuwait International Airport. <laughs> Thank you. 
thank you. Right, so here in Kuwait International Airport at the Al Mubarakia International Lounge, this is stop one on the great tour of the world. And it's quite interesting to be here because just 30 years ago, I remember growing up as a kid back in the UK and seeing Kuwait in the news all the time for all the wrong reasons and never thinking for one minute that I'd ever be sailing for her and yet here I am. Anyway, it was a fantastic flight down with Kuwait Airways. Really enjoyed that, even though with all the excitement that we had with the almost having a diversion. Um, it's a really nice ride over. Sitting here now in the Al Mubarakia Lounge, of course, drinking Diet Coke because Kuwait's a dry country. And of course, it is Ramadan at the moment as well. Uh, I shall remain sober and stoked on caffeine until we arrive in India at least. So, yeah. Cheers. Next stop is Delhi in India, and I'm looking forward to this. It's another Kuwait Airways flight on another 777, also in business class. Let's go. Thank you very much. Lovely to meet you. Thank you. It was interesting to see that the global coffee chain Starbucks have even made their way to Kuwait. Even McDonald's is coming soon to Kuwait Airport. After a couple of hours, it was time to board flight two of this trip down to Delhi in India. Thank you. Hello. Good evening. How are you? Thank you very much. Thank you. So I am on board and heading to India. The city of Kuwait looks absolutely stunning when it's up at night. Progress update on our flight, flight two of the day of our six flights around the world. Uh, this flight heading from Kuwait up to Delhi in India. So about three hours left on today's flight. There's not many people in the cabin, it's really quiet, so I'm going to try and get a few hours sleep. Um, so we land into Delhi at midnight UK time, but then I've got like three flights to do through India and then on to Singapore. I'm not really going to be able to sleep on those domestic ones. Cause so probably not going to get to sleep until some point tomorrow, UK time. Um, so every little bit of sleep counts at this moment, I think. And I've got a really nice comfy flat bed to lie in, so I might as well make the most of it and at least get a couple of hours, if nothing else. I got my head down and decided to try getting a few hours sleep. Okay, so I haven't really slept that well, to be honest, as expected, because we're nearing the end of the flight. And remember, on my time zone in the UK, it's only midnight, so I'll probably normally be going to bed about this sort of time. And we've got about half an hour left to land, which I thought it would be the perfect time to show you this really crazy route that we've had to do to avoid Pakistani airspace. The route that we should have done was one from Kuwait, straight across Pakistan to Delhi. Thanks to all this airspace being closed off here with all the conflicts in Pakistan, we've had to fly this really crazy route from Kuwait across to Iran, all the way down, out into the Arabian Sea, off the coast of Pakistan, down towards Mumbai, and then do this crazy dog leg all the way back up here towards Delhi. It adds about an hour to the flight and 500 miles. And the crews on this flight do two flights back to back. They go to Delhi and back on the same night. And that extra hour means it's an extra two hours on their shift for them as well. I was chatting to the flight attendant earlier and she said that it's causing them to have really long shifts now when they do the Delhi shift. So it's not great for anybody really. As dawn broke over in the east, it was time to commence our descent down into the really murky skies over India.
Immigration at Delhi took quite a long while. They wouldn't let me into the country until they were really certain that I was going to be heading out again. Trying to explain that I was a YouTuber and I was only staying for a few hours, it was pretty difficult to get that across to the immigration guy, I have to say. But fortunately, he understood in the end and stamped my passport and in I came. No, thank you. No, 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 I'm just connecting. No, thank you. All right then, so I'm here at the really hot, sticky and crazy Delhi International Airport, Indira Gandhi Airport here in Delhi in India. Sacrifice down Kuwait Airways were absolutely fantastic. I have now got to hotspot it across Delhi Airport to another terminal, I think, to try and um, find my way to the terminal where the Star Airlines go. They're the airline that I'm trying next on this crazy adventure down to Ahmedabad. Check out the security guard on the left here. This was something that I saw at every single airport in India. Thank you very much. Thank you. It feels really good to be coming into the air conditioned terminal after that horrible smog out there. It's just crazy. A few minutes and it was um, getting to my chest. <laughs> it's really bad. I'm not used to it, you can tell. Crazy trying to get into the terminal here. There are several different checkpoints to get through just to get into the terminal. As if getting into the terminal in the first place wasn't hard enough, getting through security to get to airside was another level altogether. Security here is freaking insane. You guys in the US think you have it bad with TSA? Oh my god. There's something completely different here. I get there, there is just chaos at the security point. They say take out your electronics. I do what I normally do, take out my phone, iPad, things like that, and just put them in the tray. Queue up for about 10 minutes to get to the security point, and my bag gets thrown back at me, and he said, Electronics out, electronics out. So I've got all of them. He sent me right to the back of the queue. And of course, I, I travel with so much electronics. So this tray was just overflowing with stuff. I've no idea how they saw it any better in the tray than they would have done in there. Finally, he went through and he was like, you, sh you know, everything's out now. It's like, yeah. And he said, and he was literally, he's looking at me as if he knows that there's something else in there. And I'm thinking, there's nothing else in there. And there wasn't, anyway. So we went through the gate. Then you have to get patted down. Then he wanted to see my boarding pass, which of course has gone through the x-ray machine. So I had to go back again and get my boarding pass. And then finally threw my backpack at me and that was it. Uh, just absolutely insane. Airside, finally, just having a lovely authentic Indian meal. And it is authentic Indian because you can't get a tiny little zinger and a tiny little coke like this back in the UK. It was soon time to head down to the gate and wait for my flight over on Vistara. Like every other flight in this video, I'll be doing a separate review of Vistara. Don't forget to check it out, I really did enjoy Vistara, they've got a really good product in India. Touched down right on time at Ahmedabad in the Indian state of Gujarat. Ahmedabad Airport had a completely different vibe to Delhi. As much as security was still pretty intense, it was a really different experience and people seemed really friendly down here. This guy even wanted a selfie with me. <laughs> right, so I'm here now in Ahmedabad in India somewhere. That was my one, two, third flight. <laughs> I had to think then. Coming up to 24 hours since I left the sundial at Greenwich and I'm here in a very sunny, very hot, very sweaty India. I mean, you've got kind of, you can see the tuk-tuks over there. I'm going to take a walk over there actually. Um, this is about as close as I'm going to get to seeing the real India, I think, because um, it's um, all a little bit crazy. You see there's got like tuk-tuks and things over there, so um, it's very, very... No taxi, thank you. 
everybody wants to send you a taxi. So yes, here in Ahmedabad, and I'm gonna head back inside now because my next flight is with Indigo down to Mumbai. Hello. Ahmedabad Airport is really strange and deep. Land side, it looks absolutely stunning. The security checkpoint here is something else. I've never seen a security checkpoint where you have to walk through an old temple wall to get to it, or at least a made up version. Security was still pretty intense and there were separate male and female queues that you had to get first as you went through. Airside, however, was a completely different matter and it was absolute chaos. I have found somewhere a little bit quieter, a little bit cooler. There's an upstairs level here, actually. There's also several restaurants with the Subway, KFC. I've had one KFC, can I get away with another one today? I don't know. Sorry, that sounds disgusting. I'm absolutely busted for the bathroom. Um, but it is minging, it's absolutely awful. There is a lounge, it's a priority pass lounge, just down the back there, which uh, I'm kind of reluctant to use because I'm trying to get the authentic Indian experience and sitting in a lounge isn't the authentic Indian experience, but I guess maybe it's KFC or Subway. But. And I found out, by the way, that where I am on Medabad, it's a love Mahatma Gandhi here. I opened up some sort of temple or something here. Um, he had some, some sort of link to Ahmedabad and there's like museums and statues of him everywhere all around the airport so it's quite interesting. My next flight is in two and a half hours. So the reason I've booked all these ex these massive waits in between flights, I kind of made the mistake when I went to Kazakhstan of not leaving enough time between flights, taking into account local conditions and ended up missing my flight and didn't want to do the same here. Can I have a chicken singer with cheese? Yeah. yeah. With um, meal, without meal? Uh, with meal. And can I have that large? I large, okay. Really big? <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you. Welcome. So, still not giving in and gone to the lounge. The lounge is just right just there. I'm still not doing it. I've got an hour left in my flight. Come on, Noah, you can do this. It's now, I don't know why I'm looking at my watch because my battery has long died on that. Um, it's now 24 hours exactly since I left the sundial at Greenwich in London. I'm actually really, really exhausted now. Um, I've had to board my Indigo flight down to Mumbai and I've got like seven and a half hours in Mumbai before my flight with a flatbed on it to Singapore. Finally, it was time to board my Indigo flight down to Mumbai. Indigo are a low-cost airline here in India, so it was really interesting to see how low-cost is done in this part of the world. Again, there will be a separate video review of Indigo, but to be honest, there wasn't much to distinguish them from any other low-cost airline anywhere else in the world. <laughs> Oh my god, I've just had a revelation. I think I've just realised, I don't know why it's taken me until now to figure it out. Indigo, India, and go, as in like go in India, so it's like Indi, India, go. I just thought it was down after the colour. Landing in Mumbai I found to be a completely surreal experience and different to any other approach I've had anywhere else in the world. After flying really low over the mountains, there were massive mansions and fancy apartment blocks before the extreme poverty of this part of the world came into view. Flying low over the slums of Mumbai, seeing kids playing football on dusty patches of land, witnessing the immense poverty here in abundance was an experience that really impacted me.
to Mumbai. We are here. Four flights down, three to go. Next flight is in about seven hours from here. I'm going to try my luck and see if I can get into the t terminal building here. Everybody just loves their horns here, don't they? Um, Singapore Airlines next, down to Singapore, and then across to LAX. Okay, now I have calmed down a little bit. Let me explain to you just what on earth happened outside the airport. So I didn't realize that Mumbai Airport um, has, it has a separate international terminal to the domestic terminal, which a lot of airports over here do. I didn't realize that it's six kilometers away. Um, I know that now. What happened was I came out of the terminal, domestic terminal, and a guy who could kind of see me looking lost. In Singapore? Not from here, it's from the international yeah, terminal. terminal. Yeah, from other terminal, yes. Yeah. Is this a I need, Yeah, I need it's to get... It's 10 kilometers, sir. I'm a taxi driver. Yeah, I actually need to get Uber. I'll get to the Uber. Uber, you won't get it on this place, sir. It's got a prepaid cab. I'll drop you to the airport. What time are you going to fly? Did you take cards? What time you do? Yeah, I accept cards. Sir. You take cards? Yeah. Good. Okay, I'll come with you. Um, he takes me based on this walk. Good Lord. To a line of cars. Load up, mate. Say something in... Hindu to the guy in the cab, gets me in the back of the cab, and the guy says, right, $20. It's like, okay, it sounds pretty steep. $20, I was thinking, okay, that's not, it's about 15 pounds. Door shuts, this security guard comes running over to the car. The guy who's took me to the car shouts at me first, don't listen to him, he's gonna try and get you to get out, you just tell him that we're your friends. It's like, what? At this point, alarm bells are ringing in my head. And he opens the door, he's like, you need to get out, get out, get out, get out. It's like, okay. I had absolutely no idea what was going on. The guy who took me over was pleading with me to stay. The guy walks me over to the terminal, he goes, you nearly got robbed. I was like, what? He said, taxi to the international terminal, which cost 200 rupees, which is about two pounds. 200 rupees. 200 rupees, so you are? Yeah, yeah. So two dollars? Yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. Okay, okay, okay. Um, and he said this guy is he was going to scam you i was saved thankfully by the guy who took me over to the prepaid taxes and i was able to get one from there and then take the hair raising ride over here so once again noel gets stung by dodgy foreign taxis and it happened in Ukraine, it's happened in Kazakhstan, and I never learn my lesson, do I? So if you're connecting between domestic and international here at Mumbai, that's something you need to take into account. If you've got to drive into town, around the motorway, come off somewhere else, it's just crazy. I just need to sit and wait here, but fortunately they have a dedicated business class and first class check-in area just here. Which is relatively pleasant. And they've got clean toilets as well, which is all the better. The cleanest toilet I've seen since I've been in India, to be honest. I want to go home. And I'm going around the world in 80 hours. Which was the best trip you find out? So far, Kuwait. I know that you'll be better on the um, long leg anyways. <laughs> so, thank you very much. That's the launch invitation done. Lovely, thank you very much. All right, nice. thanks very much, bye-bye. As well as dedicated check-in, there's a dedicated security point here at Mumbai as well, which was a lot easier than the other ones that I'd experienced in India. I headed up to the GVK lounge at Mumbai, which is the lounge that Singapore Airlines use. All right, thank you. Lovely, thank you. Have a good time, sir. Thanks very much. Cheers, thank you. I was just in time to witness this amazing Indian sunset. After showering and freshening up, it was time to relax and enjoy this amazing lounge. The staff here were really friendly. This lady brought me as many drinks as I wanted and even set up my phone to connect to the Wi Fi when I couldn't get it to work. Now this is a lot more like it. Showered, teeth cleaned, changed, I feel like a human being again, or at least half a human. More importantly, I have wine. My first wine of the trip. This is much better. A couple of hours now until my flight over to, where am I going next, Singapore? Which will be flight number five. Hello. 
as much as I'd enjoyed witnessing India, I'd find it pretty exhausting. It was time to get on board a Singapore Airlines flight or I'd hopefully get some sleep. Hello, sleep within minutes of taking off from Mumbai and woke up as we were on final approach into Singapore. At last I was at an airport that was pretty familiar to me and one that I've been through several times before. Bye. Goodbye. Right, Singapore. This is the home of the mileage run and time now to get to my connecting flight to LA. Changi Airport is absolutely massive and Singapore Airlines operate from two terminals so I had to get the SkyTrain across to the other terminal where my flight to LAX was going to be departing. I did get a good chance to have a look around the Cactus Garden and the Lily Garden which was amazing to be able to stand in such a beautiful place and look out through the plates of glass with the aviation action outside. My ride over to Los Angeles, this Singapore Airlines A350, was sitting on stand getting prepared for departure. Hello, good morning. It's 15 now for... Yeah, for yes, thank you. Tall, I know. Some rushing. Yes. I supported the longest flight of this trip at nearly 15 hours long. I was shown to my seat by the friendly very much. beautiful takeoff from Singapore and I was able to sit back and relax for the longest period that I'd have on this journey. We've taken off from Singapore. The flight time today is about 14 to 15 hours. So I'm going to be first of all sleeping because right now in UK time it's 2 a.m. so I'm gonna have a bite to eat. Once I've had that, I'm gonna get my head down to see how much sleep I can get on this flight. Quite a few people have been asking me on Twitter already why I'm taking this flight to LA when I could have probably taken the world's longest flight now from Singapore to New York. That flight is so long in fact that it can go either way. It doesn't have to go over the Pacific. In fact, the shortest way to get from Singapore to New York is to go back over Europe, over the Atlantic, and into New York that way. Depending on the weather and the on route winds, sometimes it goes over the Pacific. In fact, most of the time it goes over the Pacific, but it's not guaranteed at all. If I'd have booked that flight, there was every possibility that I could have come all the way to Singapore and then we'd have backtracked all the way back to the UK. That would have meant essentially flying over my house and then going another eight hours over to New York before having to get on another plane back to the UK again. Two problems with that. First of all, I think that would be absolutely soul destroying to actually see pretty much England out of the window of the plane and then carry on to New York and then have to go back again. But also, it wouldn't be a trip around the world that way. LA flights and the San Francisco flight always go over the Pacific Ocean. My body clock was telling me it was three in the morning, so I got the cabin crew to make up my bed and got my head down for a really nice sleep as we crossed the Pacific Ocean. woken up. I don't know where we are actually, we're somewhere over the Pacific. We've got about six hours left to go. Um, I've just slept for seven hours, which was pretty decent. I'm quite happy with that. This bed is so comfortable and it was really easy to get to sleep and stay asleep. Um, Thank you. So combine that seven hours on this flight with the three hours on the last flight. I've slept for 10 hours and more importantly just crossed the international date line. So we've just jumped back in time 24 hours so we get to do Sunday again. America out the window. Familiarity. That's quite emotional to be honest. Listen to some amazing music. It 
As we cruised in over Southern California, it was great to get a view of America out the window. I listened to some appropriate music as we came in over the suburbs of LA. Now I know that I'm not American, but landing in LA really felt like I was coming home. At least compared to the other parts of the world that I travelled through on the rest of this trip. Thank you so much. Have a good day, thank you. Thank you very much, bye bye. LA, LA. I'm here in Los Angeles. Woo -hoo. Made it across the Pacific Ocean with Singapore Airlines. Got about 12 hours or so to my next flight. Buzzing to be back on familiar turf, even if I am in the States and not back home in the UK, it's a step closer to home. Got a few hours here, I'm going to hopefully meet up with my friend who has got a little bit of a surprise for us, I am told. Got to head on an Uber somewhere, so I'm going to head over there and try and find out where to go now. So I have been told by my friend Ali to head over to 3223 Donald Douglas Loop South. All very cryptic. I called an Uber and within five minutes my ride had arrived to take me to the mysterious location. Hey, how are you? Ugh. Right, so we're here at 3223 Donald Douglas Drive, which turns out to be Santa Monica Airport. He's also given me an aircraft tail number, so I am believing we're potentially going to be getting a ride on a plane. Yay! I didn't have to wait too long and I saw my friend arrive in his Grumman AA5. How you doing, all right? <laughs> all right, so here at Santa Monica Airport, I would say international, but I don't think you're gonna get very international from here. This is my friend Ali, who's very kindly flown up from San Diego, and is gonna take me for a little spin in this, um, what is it, a Grumman AA5? It's, it's a Grumman AA5B. Actually, it's an American General AG5B, which was a uh, an updated version of the Tiger. But uh, when you, when you look at what it is when you file a flight plan or something, it's still an AA5. Sweet, so there you have it from the expert himself. Uh, we're going to go for a little flight. We're going to take a $50 hamburger and go get some lunch somewhere um, and just have a fly around California. First stop today was Camarillo, about a 20 minute flight north of Santa Monica, where we grab some lunch and wait for the clouds to burn off a bit. After a pretty brief flight up at about 6,000 feet, we started our descent down into Camarillo. This really is celebrity town. As we came in on final approach, Caitlyn Jenner was behind us in her Beechcraft Baron. Also based out of Camarillo are Kenny G, and of course Harrison Ford, who we kept a good eye out for in the taxiway. There's also a wing of the commemorative Air Force here, meaning we could see some amazing old warbirds as we taxied in. For an amazing lunch at the famous Waypoint Cafe and some incredible tri-tip steak, it was time to take off again a stone heavier than when we arrived. I was able to sit on the left as we headed south towards San Diego and the clouds had cleared giving an amazing view over LAX. This is an experience that I've always wanted to do and I just wish that I'd got my SLR camera to try getting some of those famous shots. Even without a fancy SLR though, the view was incredible as we crossed LAX. We headed down the coast towards Long Beach and got a view of the Queen Mary sitting there with a cruise ship at the side of her. We got air traffic control clearance then to descend to 500 feet and fly right along the Sunset Cliffs National Park as we headed down towards San Diego. It was incredible flying solo just off the coast of California. From there we headed round and got some fantastic views of the San Diego skyline. We got some incredible views of the city of San Diego and its famous skyline with the USS Midway just out in the harbour. Our scenic tour of the Bay Area of San Diego complete 
We made a U-turn and headed back towards Montgomery Field, which is where our next stop would be today. All right, guys, so we are here now at San Diego, California. We flew down from Camarillo, right down the coast, from LA down to San Diego. It was a fantastic flight, about an hour long, in the Grumman that you can see right behind me. We've got a little bit of time. I'm going to spend a couple of hours here. My flight isn't for another few hours yet, back up from LAX. So we're going to play it out here a little bit, have a bite to eat, and then head back up towards LA. After a few hours chilling at my friend's apartment in San Diego, we headed back to Montgomery to get back to LAX in time for my flight. Incredibly, light aircraft are able to land at LAX, even though the landing fees are, as you'd expect, pretty high. Instead, we opted to fly into Hawthorne, which is about a 15 minute drive from LA, and made this parallel approach next to a Boeing 747. It's not something that you get to do very often in light aircraft in the UK. After an incredible day flying around the skies of Southern California, it was time to jump in an Uber and make the 15 minute drive back to LAX. Alright, so back here at LAX Terminal 2. Fantastic day flying with Ali down today with my friend. Big thanks to Ali for flying me all around California today and giving me a great opportunity to see California from the sky. Now I am heading inside. I am worn out. Virgin Atlantic Dreamliner back to London Heathrow, hopefully with enough time for me to shoot across London to get back to Greenwich at 5pm. Last flight of the trip. I am absolutely one and truly exhausted and I think this last one is just going to be spent sleeping on the plane. People like to give the TSA a lot of grief but to be honest I've never really had an issue with them. Um, always been quite happy, smiley, friendly and tonight was no exception. Hi, yeah. Thank you. After a long trip like this, Thank I always you. love hearing a British voice as I board the flight. It means I'm almost home. Thank you very much. Hi, are After the seatbelt signs went off, the flatbed came down and I went to sleep for what was the best night's sleep I've ever had on board a flight. After an incredible eight hours of unbroken sleep, I woke up over the Western Islands of Scotland where we were about to commence our descent down into London. I've just woken up after eight hours of sleep on this flight. I've slept, this is definitely the most I've slept on any flight. And I slept for quite a while on the Singapore, but this was eight hours. So went to sleep just after takeoff, didn't even have dinner, and I've just woken up and we're over Northern Scotland. <laughs> so I've had at least eight, possibly nine hours sleep on this flight. Very comfortable um, sleepwear that they give you here as well, the sleep suits that you get. So yeah, just woken up, just getting breakfast now. We are due to land in about an hour's time into Heathrow, which gives me roughly an hour and a half to get through immigration and get back to Greenwich for five o'clock. So it's going to be really tight and that's if it all goes smoothly. So let's keep fingers crossed and see how we do and hopefully we get back to Greenwich for 5pm. Okay, so before we land in London, a few questions I know I'm going to get asked about this crazy trip around the world and the first question is why am I doing this well this is what I do I'm an aviation geek I'm a massive travel fan very fortunate to be able to do this as my job and I create aviation content like this and create challenges secondly am I some sort of rich kid who flies around the world in business class all the time well no I'm able to do this because I 
find cheap flights all the time, cheap fares, to be able to take advantage of stuff like this. So I've worked very hard for 20 odd years in IT and grown a YouTube channel up over the time. I've got a wife and two kids back at home who are very understanding and very supportive um, and I wouldn't be able to do this sort of thing without them. In terms of how much this trip cost me, well, let's put it this way, it cost me less than the price of a usual one-way flight from London to New York in business class and that's because I use a combination of websites and things to find cheap fares, sale fares, air fares, whatever they come about. So this trip kind of all started with a fare from Mumbai to LA via Singapore. With Singapore Airlines, thanks to a big sale they had, that cost me like 900 quid. This particular flight I'm on now was the return leg of a, another cheap fare that I got from Malta to Los Angeles. Um, I took the outbound leg a few weeks ago and this is the return leg from LA back to London. Uh, this flight basically cost me 600 quid, which compared to the usual fare of about four grand is a massive saving. I'd never pay that for a flight. Finally, I had to get to Mumbai, of course. So I opted to go to Delhi initially with Q8 Airways. That again was a cheap fare, that was like 900 quid. And then the two flights down India were like 50 quid each. So all in all, it's cost me less than two and a half grand this entire round the world trip. And a usual one way um, business class fare from London to New York is about three grand. So it just kind of shows you how much money you can save just by looking around. Approach and landing today was from the west, which gave us some great views over the English countryside and Winter Castle as we came in on our final approach to runway 9 left at Heathrow. Touchdown and home at last, well, almost. I still had the little problem of getting back to Greenwich. Thank you so much, have a great day. Thank you. Right, so here at Heathrow, yes, back in the UK, it feels so good, the weather is amazing. Now I've got to get back to Greenwich, it's half past three, so I'm in a bit of a rush now, I've got to get back to Greenwich for five, so about an hour and a half to get through immigration and do the journey that took me an hour and a half before, but thankfully I just had a message from somebody who's going to be giving me a hand to get across to Greenwich as quickly as possible. How are you? I'm alright, right, thanks, how are you? Yeah, good. Yeah. All right, so I am here at Heathrow. This is Reese. He's going to very kindly take me across on this little thing to Greenwich. How cool is this? Thanks to Limo Bike who have offered to um, give me a lift over there today. Really looking forward to this. And hopefully we've got about an hour and eight minutes to get back to Greenwich. So traffic depending, let's see how we can do. headed off through the streets of London on what was quite possibly the most exciting taxi ride that I've ever had. The limo bike experience was absolutely incredible and took us past all the sights as we crossed London towards Greenwich. My rider Reese was in constant communication over the headset and pointed out all the sights as we whizzed past all the traffic towards the sundial at Greenwich. I could hardly contain the excitement on my face. After a journey time of less than 50 minutes, we've made it to Greenwich. I still had a few minutes to go though as I headed towards the Sondheim. Nine minutes. Nine minutes to lug it through. Hello, <laughs> see you. Bye bye. All right, so here at Greenwich, we have got six minutes to get back to the Sundial. It's only 80 hours since we set off on Friday. I we've just done that. And there it is. Made it. <laughs> 1654. 
we have six minutes to spare. I'm going to come in the shade so I can show you the time. There we go. 16.54. It is five minutes to five on Monday. We made it with five minutes to spare. Thank you so much to Limo Bike for helping me to get across London so quickly. Crazy, crazy trip around the world. I can't believe that it. it's just been 80 hours since I left this very sundial and I've been the entire way around the world. See some incredible things, India, Singapore, Kuwait, America, California, all, of the last, all over the last 80 hours. And here we are back at the sundial in Greenwich with the observatory behind us on a beautiful, beautiful day. Look at this, much better than when we left. Thank you so much for watching this video, guys. Really do appreciate it. If you like what you see, please do consider subscribing to me here on YouTube. Don't forget, if you support me on Patreon as well, you get a host of extra benefits. You get early video access and all sorts of things like that. Full length flight videos and stuff. And also you get to help support us here at In Flight Video. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. I'll see you next time here on In Flight Video. I'm going to have a lay down.